Hey everybody, back again with some of my favorite gear that I took with me on my 2018 through hike attempt. Um, this is gear that I would definitely take again, and uh, I'll start with the Petzl E Light. This little thing hardly weighs anything. It has a red light setting and two uh, other settings and a couple of flash settings on red and on white light. So, folks, please get a headlight that has the red light capability on there. You will be friends forever. There were so many hikers out there that had headlamps that didn't have that red light setting. And it's nothing like being woke up with bright light in your eyes. But you can do... You can get around that. I used my buff over my eyes when I was trying to sleep to block out the light. But if you want to practice good trail etiquette, get a headlamp that has the red light capability. I'm not going to tell you, you know, you can find these at REI. They're around 30 bucks. I'm not going to give you exact weights and all that, but you can find these pretty easy. REI, that's where I got mine. Okay, next piece of gear, and I started February 17th. I decided to take the Marmot Precip Rain Jacket. It has pit zips. Which are very valuable. I believe the Helium Rain Jacket has a model with pit zips in. That's what I would recommend. Uh, the Marmot Precip is a little heavier jacket and I wanted that when I started out and I actually kept it with me. I didn't uh, trade it in for my Helium. My Helium doesn't have the pit zips and that was one of the reasons. But when I hiked when I started in the cold weather, I would wear a lightweight base layer under this and I just had some North Face rain pants. They're a little heavier. You can get the Marmot Precip pre has pants. Rain pants also. Um, but I would wear this over my lightweight base layer. And that was my winter hiking. And that's all I wore. And if it got a little colder. Um, I do, I'm not showing that in this video, but I had a, uh, when I bought it, it was called oh. Patagonia Expedition Weight Hoodie. It's under a different name now. I don't know if it's heavyweight or if it's R1. Um, I'm not positive on that. But if it got a little cool, I would put that on top of my base layer and under the rain jacket, and I was plenty warm for hiking. Okay, so... When I got close to the Smoky Mountains, I was worried about being warm up there, and um, I'm glad I made this decision. I was carrying the Smart Wool Expedition Weight Socks for my night socks. The weight compared to these Feathered Friend Down Socks, I saved weight, and these were so, so much warmer. So uh, I highly recommend these for cold weather. If you're starting out early, this is a good investment. So when I got up to the Smokies, I got these. And um, I di didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on gear. You know why I was out there. This is just an off-brand. That's the logo. I got it off of Amazon. There is no label inside telling me the name of this thing. But any cheap down hoodie will do. It, it'll just give you a little more warmth on your head when you're sleeping. Um, I thought the hood on my jacket would have been good enough. But there was a couple times where I was losing body heat out of my head. And I'm glad I got these two pieces of gear. I really didn't carry them that long. Uh, after the Smokies, I sent those home. <clears throat> Another good piece of gear if you're starting out early is this is just like the yellow one, the Neo Air X Light. 
Uh, but the silver one has more insulating capability for you. Uh, never felt the cold coming through this thing at all, ever. Um, I put a piece of Velcro, the scruffy side of the Velcro here. Because uh, when I started out, I had a uh, inflatable pillow and that helped it from moving around, sliding out from under my head and stuff. Uh, but that thing didn't last long at all. It got a puncture hole and that was the end of that. When I bought this, it came with a stuff sack to blow this up. And I love that thing. I will carry that also with this pad. Um, yeah, in the warmer weather, even when it warmed up, this really didn't make me sweat. So that's another thing to mention. But yeah, I, I like this pad and I would take it again. Um, this is a piece of gear I picked up at Damascus. I started out with the pods for the Wind Rider bag, and it was really nice, but it got to the point where I just got tired of some of the stuff getting stuck in the zipper. So, this is a pack liner from Hyper Mountain Gear. It's just a big bag, rolled top. I would put everything in this bag and smoosh it down and put it in my bag and everything kept dry. Uh, a lot of people use compactor bags and I did also for a while, but they always ended up getting holes and trying to find them, trying to find a small package where you're not, you know, spending a lot of mon money on buying five of them when you only need one. Um, yeah, something like this is going to last your hike. Either this or a cryo. I think that uh, the clear cryo bags, you can get them off of Gossamer Gear website. They may last a little longer than the trash compactor bags. Another piece of gear that I love and I will always take on any hike I go is the ZC. This thing is awesome. I use this for uh, my welcome mat to my tent, always. You know, you can kneel on that and do your work in your tent. And uh, it's nice for getting in and out and getting your shoes on. Uh, you can fan fires, you use it for a seat. Uh, you can hardly see it now, but I put hiker to town on one side and hiker to trail on the other, but it's all wore off. But yeah. Love that. Okay. So, like I said before, I was so worried about being warm on the trail, and, and don't worry, you'll be good. So, I was really toasty on the trail, and um, I probably overdid a little bit, but I was never cold. So, I will take this setup again. This is a 10 degree Revelation quilt. This is the initial quilt that uh, sleeping system that I bought that I was definitely going to take. Um, and I was going to take a Sea to Summit uh, reactor liner bag with that. But then I started uh, reading the website on Enlightened Equipment. And I recommend if you're getting a quilt to really go through their website. Uh, because they talk about how you can layer your uh, quilt system. And I actually save weight by doing that. So I didn't take the reactor bag liner. And it, this was a last minute sale. So um, my, my revelation is uh, regular, regular. And that worked perfect. And when I started the trail, I was 210 pounds. And it cinched down around me good. Uh, so the layering system is you get different straps with two sets of hooks on each strap. So you can cinch both of the quilts in. This is a 50 degree, 50 degree synthetic Enigma. And 
the theory, my theory was, this is a closed foot box, the Enigmas are. Uh, this was the only one that was available in the warehouse in wide because I didn't want another regular size to smush down the down in my revelation. So the wide went over that comfortably. It gave me more warmth. It's synthetic. I could wash it. Um, if dew laid on it, I didn't have to worry about any down in this getting um, messed up or wet or anything like that. The only thing I didn't like is this is a wide short. So this is probably like five inches shorter than my revelation. So I couldn't have both of them snugged up. Um, I'm 5'5", five five and my revelation, and I'm a side sleeper. I could actually get this up, you know, around my ears and be really nice and tucked in. Um, I also recommend that on the website you learn how to actually use them. I've seen people on trail that weren't using them right and were freezing, and I've seen people actually get off trail because of that. And I felt so bad, you know, it's like, and, you know, some people don't want to, aren't good at taking advice, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, this one person was sleeping two people down from me in the shelter, and he froze, I didn't, you know. They're made to put the straps around your sleeping pad, attached to your sleeping pad. So when you roll around, the sides don't come up and you don't get any air draft. You can't put the straps around your body. It doesn't work too good that way because when you roll, your whole back is exposed to the wind and weather and so on. But yeah, lighting equipment, great website that, you know, just surf around their site and you'll find out all kind of cool information so uh there may be another video like this of gear that i've taken oh another piece of gear to show you this is from anti-gravity gear and this is definitely one of my pieces of gear uh i did a lot of freezer bag actually uh, all my cooking was freezer bag cooking um, quart size freezer bags will fit in here perfect and it will hold well what I would do is a half a pack of ramen and some potatoes uh, winter time you can carry summer sausage and some block cheese sharp cheddar is good and um, yeah that makes a good meal so uh yeah, if you have any other questions on food, you know, leave any questions in the comments. Um, I want to do a, a video on that, some of the trail food I ha I ate and packed and uh, at different times, you know, of my hike as far as when the weather changed, you know, what was good to carry. Um, also, I want to show you a layout of... Um, my winter clothing, all I took, and then what I took during the summer, and it was it was amazing how much stuff I sent home. So much stuff. All right, so I took up enough of your time. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your comments. I appreciate it so much. And till we meet again, have a good night, and Happy New Year's again. Later.